It's October and you know what that means. Aside from pumpkin spice and Halloween candy and dressing up and all these other cool things that we do, at least in the United States around this time of the year, we also get to enjoy a new release of Ubuntu, which is arguably one of the most popular distributions of Linux ever. And in this video, we are going to check out the latest version, Ubuntu 2010, which was just released. Are you ready to upgrade? Are you just itching to go ahead and get it installed? Well, not so fast. We're going to talk about 2010 and some of the things that I like, some of the things that I don't really like as much, and we're going to answer the question as far as whether or not you should upgrade to this new version. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here I am with a fresh installation of Ubuntu 2010 that's ready to go. Off camera, I've spent some time with it and I am ready to give you guys my thoughts. Now first of all, when it comes to the visual appearance, I think that's something that Ubuntu has done very well with for quite a few releases now. Now while it's all up to personal opinion as far as whether this particular color scheme is appealing to you personally, I do feel that the themes here are very well put together and show that there's quite a bit of attention to detail. So for example, if I open up the file manager, you can see the theming in all its glory. We can see the icon theme for things like folders, and we have the color scheme as more of an orange for the highlight here. Although, to be honest, I am a bit colorblind, but we'll forget about that. When I open up the applications list, you can see the icons for various applications. And of course, I've installed a few myself, such as Final Fantasy VI. That doesn't come default with Ubuntu. And the same goes for Doom. But other than that, you can see the chosen icon theme here. And on this 4K display, I have to say, everything looks clear and crisp. Now when it comes to performance, I don't know how well it's going to look in the recording because my screen capture device isn't really the best. But when I'm sitting here looking at my laptop screen, everything just looks smooth, it's fast, and applications open up very quickly. So I have no complaints when it comes to the performance. In every release of Ubuntu, we get a brand new GNOME experience, a brand new GNOME version. And this time we have GNOME 3.38, which also comes with some speed improvements. And it seems like every version of GNOME nowadays actually increases the speed and performance a little bit more each time. Although, on my end, I'm running on a ThinkPad X1 Extreme, so this is not a slouch of a computer at all. So I think that I'm less likely to notice a difference than others that might be on a slower machine. But for me, Ubuntu always runs fast with every release, so um, I don't really think there's any room for improvement on my end. But I'm sure those of you out there that might have a slower machine, you may experience an increase in speed. And that's definitely a good thing. Now overall, there's really not much to say about this particular release. Like I mentioned, with every version of Ubuntu, we get a brand new GNOME version, and then we automatically benefit from all of the features that each GNOME version gives us. And I already mentioned the performance improvements, which is one of the highlights of GNOME 3.38, but there aren't really any major features to brag about with this new version of GNOME, so what I'm going to do is show you some of the user-facing changes in this version of GNOME. So for example, if I go to the system menu, and then I expand power off, log out, you can see that we actually have separate items for suspend, restart, and power off. Previously, you would just click on the power off button and then choose restart, but now restart is its own option. Now that's not an earth shattering change, it is welcome. I don't think that there's anything wrong with having faster access to the restart option here, so I think that's a good thing. Now another thing that I've noticed as well, is if I go here to settings, and I'm here in power, if I scroll down, we have an option to show the battery percentage as well. So if I toggle that on, we can see the battery percentage right here. Now that's not actually a new feature in GNOME 3.38. I've been able to do that for several versions of GNOME now, but the option to enable the percentage was not in the normal settings. You had to enable it via deconf or possibly GNOME tweak. But now this option is actually present in the main settings menu. So it's more visible and easier to access for those of you that want to see the percentage in the bar on the top of the screen. Now there's also some new features here when we go to the application grid. 
And we can actually rearrange the icon. So what I'll do is I'll just grab this icon here. And I went ahead and moved it over. So we actually have control of the icons and their position. But what we also have is the ability to create folders as well. So if I drag Doom on top of Final Fantasy VI, for example, it's going to create a folder. It automatically named it Games, which is pretty cool. And if I click on that, we can see the applications that are inside that folder. And then you can change the name if you would like to name it something else. So it's pretty cool that you get full control over the applications in the grid. And while this might not be an earth-shattering, amazing feature, I don't think anyone will complain about having more options when it comes to the application grid. Now another minor change is if you go up here to the notifications area, if you have added any calendar services to GNOME, you can see your events here on the right-hand side underneath the actual calendar itself, separate from the notifications that you would normally see here on the left. Previously, you would see notifications for calendar events and system notifications all in this side on the left right here. However, in this new release, alerts for calendar events are going to show here underneath the calendar, which I think makes a lot more sense. Now again, that's not an amazing feature, but there's a lot of these smaller changes in GNOME 3.38 that are all welcome, but I don't think any one of these features alone are a good reason to upgrade to this version of Ubuntu just to get this latest version of GNOME. Now, to set some context for the remainder of this review, the question that I need to answer as a reviewer is whether or not I can recommend my viewers upgrade to this release. Now, so far, with a minimal set of features, it's really hard for me to do that, but let's see what else we can find in this release. So here on my screen, I've pulled up some release notes for Ubuntu 2010, and let's take a quick look. Now, first of all, it's important to keep in mind that Ubuntu 2010 is supported for just nine months, where Ubuntu 2004 is supported for up to five years. Now, support in this context is referring to security updates, so it's important that we always have the latest security updates on our system. So if we do upgrade to Ubuntu 2010, that means that we will need to move to the next version of Ubuntu beyond that as of July of 2021. Keep in mind that Ubuntu 2004 will still be supported at that time and beyond. So what it all comes down to for me is whether or not the new features in Ubuntu 2010 are good enough to justify us sacrificing the longer period of support that we get with Ubuntu 2004. And here we get a noticeable improvement. As always, we get a newer version of the Linux kernel. And we can see that there's actually quite a few benefits here by having the new Linux kernel. But where this falls down is that this same version of this kernel will be backported to Ubuntu 2004. So while they do have this listed as a benefit of Ubuntu 2010, it's actually not completely true. It is a benefit today because it does take a few months or so for this kernel or any new kernel to be backported to the current LTS version of Ubuntu. But all of these benefits will come to Ubuntu 2004. So this by itself, in my opinion, is definitely not a reason to upgrade to Ubuntu 2010 and sacrifice several years of support. Now when we scroll down even further, we have some toolchain upgrades. And if you are a developer, that might be enticing, but honestly, most if not all of the developers that I know, they develop in containers or in some kind of segregated environment. So having the tools tied to the release and having to upgrade the whole operating system just to get newer versions of development libraries, I don't really think that's a good customer or user experience. And I don't really feel like that's a reason to upgrade either, unless you really do want to have those same tools local on your machine. So if you are a developer and you want to have the same tools local as you do on your remote stack or wherever you develop, that may actually be a reason to upgrade. Now they do mention that NF tables is now the default when it comes to the firewall. So keep that in mind if you go to customize the firewall on your machine. Now when we scroll down, we also have GNOME. Obviously, we get the latest version of GNOME, which I've mentioned. We don't really have all that many improvements in the latest version of GNOME. Most of the improvements are behind the scenes. There aren't that many user-facing changes, so I don't really feel like that's a reason to upgrade to 2010. Now down here, we can see that these three applications have been upgraded as part of this release. 
And there's going to be more software upgrades beyond these three, but these three are very popular apps. But when it comes to Firefox, you will get the latest version of Firefox in Ubuntu 2004. So this should not be included here as a benefit for upgrading to Ubuntu 2010 because it's simply not true. There's actually nothing unique about that line item at all. And when it comes to LibreOffice, it is true that is definitely a benefit. You get LibreOffice version 7.0.2 that will not be backported to Ubuntu 2004 as far as I understand. However, with flat packs and app images, you can actually get newer versions of applications on 2004. So that defeats this line item right here. Having the latest version of LibreOffice on this version of Ubuntu is not going to be a benefit. You can still do that on 2004. And the same holds true with Thunderbird as well. So, so far, I'm not really seeing a good reason to upgrade to 2010. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Ubuntu 2010 is a bad release. It's just that if I'm going to recommend that my viewers upgrade to a newer version of Ubuntu, then I feel that there has to be a good reason to upgrade off of an LTS release and sacrifice support. And so far, I just don't see that here. Now, to be fair, Ubuntu 2010 is fast, it performs very well, and I did have one major problem that I'm going to get to in a moment, but so far, I'm not really seeing a reason to entice you guys to upgrade to this release. It is kind of a boring release of Ubuntu so far, as much as I really hate to say that. Now, to be fair, I know that all of the Ubuntu developers out there are working really hard, and I don't want to um, you know, cast a bad light on them because they are actually doing a great job. But most of the changes that they're making at this point are in the background. You're not going to notice anything user-facing just yet. Now, as I do with most of my reviews, I decided to install Steam and then install some games because I want to be able to let you guys know how the gaming experience is. I know that not all of you care about gaming, but some of you care a lot. And for those of you that do care about gaming on Ubuntu, the experience for me in 2010 has not been great. Now, first of all, I decided to try Final Fantasy VI, and that is my favorite game, and I pretty much use every opportunity I can to show it off. But the real reason why I always default to that game is because it's very easy to run. It can run on integrated graphics, so it's the first test case I do to see if Steam itself is working. And so far so good, Ubuntu 2010 is able to handle Final Fantasy VI, which means Steam does work by default. Now unfortunately, where this breaks down is any game that I've decided to try that uses more than integrated graphics has been a complete failure. I wasn't able to run Doom, which does run on this laptop with proprietary graphics, no problem in previous releases, but it just stutters and lags on this release to the point where it's unplayable. Now, I did try to make sure that the application launches via the discrete video card. If you right-click the application, you actually get an option for that. I did try that. And I also tried closing out of Steam completely and then launching Steam on the dedicated video card, which does help in some cases, and Doom was a complete failure. Now, to be fair, Doom actually runs on Proton. It is not a native game. So then I decided to try a game that is native, and that's Portal 2. That actually runs without the need of Proton, but that doesn't run well either. Both Doom and Portal 2 were virtually unplayable with the lag. It's just a horrible experience for gaming, which is very surprising because on this laptop, I review all of the distributions lately on this machine, and I've never had a problem, but something about 2010 is making this fail. Now, to be fair, I'm sure when I get more time, I'm going to do a Google search. I'm going to find the answer as far as why this doesn't work. But I can't really sell my audience into something like Ubuntu 2010 if the out-of-the-box experience with gaming is as pathetic and poor as it is. And that just creates a very bad user experience and makes it even harder for me to recommend this release. Now, I know that not all of you guys play games, and some of you may not care about this, but so far, we don't really have any features in this release that justify an upgrade away from a longer supported release, and then games don't work either. So far, Ubuntu 2010 is a very hard sell for me. 
Now I want to be careful to not overly focus on the negative because the developers of Ubuntu and the contributors in the community, they are all doing great work and I appreciate everything that everyone is doing. They're passionate about it, they believe in this project, and they want to keep it going, they want to make it a great experience for everyone. And there are some good things to say about this release. Like I've mentioned the performance and how fast things open and you know everything is fluid and fast for me. We have additional features in the application grid. We have user interface tweaking that makes everything better for the end user. So there's definitely some good things to talk about here, but unfortunately nothing great. Now I definitely understand the desire to run the latest version of your favorite distribution because in some ways it feels like Christmas morning when you unwrap gifts and you just have some new stuff to play with. That's awesome. But as a reviewer, it's my job to let you guys know whether or not I recommend that you upgrade to this release. And unfortunately, I have to say, well, no. The debate around LTS or not LTS has been going on for a very, very long time. But nowadays in 2020, we don't really rely on having the latest version of our distribution anymore because we could download app images and flat packs of our favorite applications and we don't need to upgrade to a newer version of our distro just to get those new apps. So most of the reasons why we would want to upgrade to a non-LTS release are pretty much out the window, especially considering that as good as GNOME happens to be in version 3.38, there's really not a whole lot new and Ubuntu itself has, you know, some new features like the new Linux kernel, for example. But that's going to be backported to 2004 anyway, so I really don't see any reason to recommend this to anyone. Now, if you want to go ahead and contribute to Ubuntu and give back, volunteer in the community to report bugs, offer improvements, you should definitely upgrade to this release because if you're running the latest and greatest, you could follow along with the road to the next LTS release and actually get involved in the project as well. If that's you, definitely upgrade. But for everybody else, I definitely recommend you avoid Ubuntu 2010 for now and stay on 2004. There's just really no benefit in upgrading to this release at all whatsoever. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and I will have some additional reviews coming up here pretty soon. So subscribe if you haven't already done so and I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.